today. So for our tactics session, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and the systems that are playing in his mind going into the derby after what happened last weekend. Rob's. It's really interesting and almost maybe the last throw of the dice for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to try and get more out of this Man United squad. And the system change against Spurs is really interesting, Rob, and how mm. it might affect today. Now, again, real quick here, um, this is what we think it, it could be for today's game. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Bailly could come in. Varane, very important player, is now mm. injured. It might see as well, by the way, Luke Shaw coming into a centre-back position and, and Dallow, a different player coming in. You could see that. Yeah. But this is maybe what, what we're going to see from Man United today. And I think the system change is really important and that the, the stable part of it is this. It's the three across the back. It's the two wing-backs, you know, whether it's going to be Shaw and Wan-Bissaka or maybe Dallow on that far side. But yeah. other than that, then you figure out how, to, how, to, how it goes in midfield. And the whole point of an extra defender is to have more insurance for your midfield area. Mm -hmm. So you might get these guys making forward runs a little bit more. You know, it might allow, as you saw in the European game, Paul Pogba yeah. play, suspended, of course, for this game, play alongside McTominay, knowing, safer, safer in the knowledge, got somebody there's an extra him. man there. Yeah. So that it offers up that kind of solution as well. Donny van der Beek could play in these areas. Fernandez played in this area against uh, Spurs with the ability to get forward. Mm -hmm. And, of course, if you play the three and then the two up front, Solskjaer's got options as his front pairing as well. Yeah. Against Manchester City, I don't know whether we'll see Ronaldo and Cavani. Brilliant, brilliant players, reliable, experienced players. But we'd assume that Man City are going to dominate possession, so he might go for a, a Rashford or a Greenwood to play alongside. A bit more pace on the counter-attack. A little bit more pace on the yeah. counter-attack. But then, again, it, it, this system can change, where you can have the three up front, three quick players with Ronaldo involved in that as well, and two side by side. So I like this option for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in terms of the system for what it offers other players and how other players might enjoy it. Rashford, Greenwood, Rob, aren't really wingers for me. Mm. They wouldn't mind playing in these kind of inside yeah. positions here and here to support Ronaldo. And it might also suit Greenwood to play alongside Ronaldo sometimes. So we'll see how it pans out yeah, today. Good options in the attacking it's Good options with yeah. this system based mm. on... Again, these three players basically given another insurance policy for the midfield area that hasn't been tight defensively, that can really help them. It's interesting you talk about that, that back three and how important that is. What we know with City is it will generally be a 4-3-3 with the false nine that, that you know, has been talked about. When they win 4-1 against Brighton, no one talks about it. When you lose 2-0 against Palace, people say, do they need a striker? At the moment, we've seen Phil Foden be the false nine. Jesus on the outside and Grealish on the outside. A couple of things, Rob, just on that. Ferran Torres, in the last international break, broke his foot. And I think he's been a big miss for City in that sort of false nine role. Because of his pace and the way he played it, I thought he gave him another option. Today is interesting. I don't know today if I might start with Jesus as a more central player. Why am I saying that? Because at times, as a centre-forward, he might run in behind rather than always come towards a ball that we see Phil, Phil Foden do and bring players in. But there's one thing I just wanted to bring up to you, Rob, that... If Manchester City go the 4-3-3, and you talked about those three centre-backs by Maguire and probably Lindelof, if I'm Man City and I'm Pep, what if I say Grealish, Foden and Jesus, if that's my front three, go and sit against those back three centre-backs, man for man. Now, I think that will affect mm. United. And what will happen to the full -backs? Yeah, I, I think that you're going to see this, which is Correct. which is some ways a problem with this system. We, like it, we like it when it's three at the back. Mm. We don't like it so much when it's five at the back because it, it, it gives certain room, which I, I guess you're going to show right now, uh, as, they, as they play in a five. Well, and, and what we know with City is he'll go in there, he'll go in there. And then we start to get this guy, Rob, particularly can yeah. tell, who can get on the ball, Walker, who can use his pace on the outside. Those two fullbacks from Manchester City yeah. could be a real danger for United if they get pinned back in a five, as we see with Shaw and wan -Bissaka, next to those central three. And just another point, Rob, on that. And we've talked about the benefits of the five at the back from Man United. Yeah. But again, City overload midfield. Mm -hmm. So if you get, whether whoever's playing out there, if these guys come in, in field, yeah. you know... And I know that these three will be in and around, but there could be... I mean, he comes in here, they could absolutely dominate yeah. this area, and then you've got the three players kind of twiddling their thumbs yeah, don't know because everybody's doing. kind of gone in that way for City with these with nobody to mark. So there's a ton, ton of absolutely, things that could happen yeah. in the game. I still believe that the five at the back is ultimately going to help Manchester United, but against City today, could be some difficult times for them.
Lovely stuff. Thank you, chaps. For more analysis from the two Robbies, check out their podcast where they discuss the biggest matches and stories throughout the season. It's available wherever you get your pods. That was today's tactic session. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.